Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe the roles of hormones in human reproduction, including the hormones involved in the menstrual cycle. And if you're a higher tier student then you should be able to describe how the hormones interact in the control of the menstrual cycle. In a recent video we saw that hormones are released by glands into the bloodstream. Hormones travel in the bloodstream and trigger effects in specific target organs. Scientists call this the endocrine system. Now a really important role of the endocrine system is in human reproduction. During puberty, reproductive hormones cause secondary sexual characteristics to develop, for example pubic hair. In men, the testes produce the hormone testosterone, and testosterone stimulates the testes to produce sperm. In women, the ovaries produce the hormone estrogen. Once puberty begins, eggs in the ovaries start to mature, and every 28 days an egg is released. This is called ovulation. Now, the release of an egg every 28 days is part of the menstrual cycle. So we're going to start by looking at what happens during the menstrual cycle before we look at the hormones involved. As we said, every 28 days ovulation takes place. In other words, the ovary releases an egg. In preparation for this, the uterus lining becomes thick and spongy. The egg now makes its way down to the uterus. Now, if sperm is present, then the egg can be fertilized. And if this happens, it can implant into the uterus wall and develop into a baby. However, if the egg does not get fertilized, then both the egg and the uterus lining are released. And we call this a period. So we're going to look now at the roles of four key hormones in the menstrual cycle. Now, if you're a foundation tier student, then you simply need to learn the functions of these hormones. However, higher tier students need to be able to explain how these hormones interact. So we're going to start by looking at the functions of the hormones involved. Firstly, follicle stimulating hormone, or FSH, causes an egg to mature in the ovary. Luteinizing hormone, or LH, causes this egg to be released, in other words, ovulation. And finally, the hormones estrogen, produced by the ovary, and progesterone are involved in maintaining the uterus lining, in case the egg's fertilized and implants. And remember that if the egg does not get fertilized by sperm, then both the egg and the uterus lining are released, and the woman has a period. Okay, foundation tier students can stop watching now. However, higher tier students need to keep watching. We're going to look at how these hormones interact in the menstrual cycle. In the first stage, follicle stimulating hormone, or FSH, is released by the pituitary gland. FSH travels in the blood to the ovaries, where it causes an egg to mature. At the same time, FSH triggers the ovaries to make estrogen. As we saw, estrogen causes the lining of the uterus to become thick. Estrogen also stops the pituitary gland from releasing any more FSH. Instead, the pituitary gland now releases luteinizing hormone, or LH. LH triggers ovulation, in other words the mature egg is released. Once the ovary has released its egg, the ovary now produces the hormone progesterone, and progesterone has two effects. Firstly, progesterone stops the pituitary gland from releasing FSH and LH. That's to prevent any more eggs from maturing or being released. Secondly, progesterone keeps the lining of the uterus thick in case a fertilized egg implants. And if fertilization does not take place, then the level of progesterone falls. The uterus lining and the egg are now released, and the woman has a period. Now in the exam, you could be asked to interpret graphs of these hormones during the menstrual cycle, so I'm showing that here. As you can see, the level of FSH rises, and this triggers the ovaries to release estrogen. As the level of estrogen increases, this inhibits the production of FSH, so the level of FSH falls. Oestrogen triggers the release of LH, so the LH level rises to a peak around day 14. LH triggers ovulation, and once this happens, the ovary now releases progesterone, so the progesterone level now rises. However, if fertilization does not happen, then the progesterone level falls again, and the woman has her period. Remember, you'll find plenty of questions on reproductive hormones in my Vision workbook, and you can get that by clicking on the link above. 